Hello, America. I'm Casey Kasem, and this is the American Top 40 Countdown. Well, as you guessed, I'm not Casey Kasem. My name is TJ Smith, and I'm sending you a video kind of as my introductory to say, here's who I am. Here's what I'm all about. Here's where I came from, and here's where I would like to go. Since the churches that I would teach in never videotaped the lessons, I, I have nothing to send. I mean, it's just a reality. Not every church uh, makes video of their pastor sermons. But <clears throat> I do have a really nice facility here, as you can see, and I've got my tech crew over here waiting for me to, you know, talk to, hey, guys, uh, y'all get busy back there. Yeah. No, it's actually just a green screen and courtesy of a ministry that has uh, asked me to be the guest teacher for a, a webinar series on the book of Revelation. So last week was the introductory and this week starts chapter one. We'll take one chapter per week and go through it, which is kind of my strength as a teacher uh, looking, uh, you know, at that aspect of it. Uh, my wife, Maria, and I live in the beautiful hill country town of Fredericksburg, Texas. And if you've ever been here, you know why. Uh, beautiful blue bonnets in the springtime, over 30 wineries that people come to to do wine tours, a wonderful Main Street area. It's an old German town, so there's a lot of culture and a lot of neat things to do here in a town of 10,000. They get about 2 million visitors a year, which is the reason we moved here in 2007. And that was to open up a live music venue called the Rockbox Theater. Now it's still in operation today. It's a different format now, but I came in 2007 and, and stayed through 2012, performed over 1200 shows, uh, four shows a week, uh, 50 weeks a year. It was a full-time job. Uh, we looked at it as, as marketplace ministry, since we were all believers. That was how we presented our light to the world. And it was a wonderful opportunity. And I, I really cherished the time I had there. When we left, my wife and I began to perform our own live show across the state of Texas, which is pretty big. And uh, the show that is, uh, we enjoyed that. <clears throat> but it was a lot of fun but I need to take you back just a little bit. I think I kind of got ahead of myself. My wife and I have four adult children who are great. And the reason they're great is because they have all moved out of our home. Yes. <sighs> Empty nester is great. We love it. We love it. You know, we love our kids do good out there but don't ever come back. Okay. So we're enjoying that. And what this also has done this past year is we've felt a release from God to pursue ministry full time now as lead pastor, teaching pastor, senior pastor, whatever. Now that may seem ridiculous to the search committee, but just hang with me, hang with me. And by the time I'm done, you'll, you'll see, maybe it's not such a, crazy ideas, just crazy enough to work. Well, my talents lay in uh, vocal impersonations, um, playing lead guitar, singing, that whole creative side of it. I do a lot of that stuff. Uh, in a show, I might do George Bush or I might do Bill Clinton. Wow, maybe Christopher Walken. And at times I use those voices in a sermon series to make a point, uh, to make sure people are listening and they're awake. So it helps. It comes in handy. It's fun. To go to the past, uh, my parents raised me in church. And when I was in eighth grade, they bought me a guitar, which is great because I, now I could be the next Beatles. All right. Punchline. But Within a month or two of me learning just a couple of chords, they recruited me to start leading worship for their home group in Muleshoe, Texas. Yep, 
There really is a place called Mule Shoe, Texas. A month after that, in March, three months after I got a guitar, I was born again. And my entire adulthood has been music and faith fused together, welded. I, I can't imagine Christ without worship and music. And I can't imagine my music without my Savior and my faith. So it's an unusual thing in my life to have this. What that spurned in me and what it gave birth to was when I turned 16, I had a 1966 Chevelle, fastest car in the parking lot at high school. And if I wasn't sacking groceries after school, I would drive over to our church where the pastor had set up an extra room just for me. I could go in there, read my Bible, study, and pray. Now, that pastor's ability to see that in me is something I will never forget. I mean, to have that kind of vision and focus to see one young man in your church, which I was on the worship team there too at age 16, has given me the desire and the passion over the years to seek out other young men and start to, to breathe life into them and start to speak into their lives. And scripture has always been something that I've just been passionate about. I can't study enough. It, I love every part of scripture. Now, my traveling in my ministry began in the mid 90s, early 90s. I was worship leader at a cowboy church in Billy Bob's, Texas, of all places in Fort Worth. We had church every Sunday in Billy Bob's, and I was the worship leader. And I began to write Christian music aimed at cowboys. It ended up, I, I've written over 400 songs since I was 15. Nine songs on the top 40 on the Christian country charts. I spent time as an artist on Chris, Christian's record label. And it gave me the opportunity to use my teaching and my ability with scripture as an avenue once I'm there to sing about Jesus. So that was a wonderful time in my life. Uh, I also was associate pastor at uh, Radio Hill Church in Gainesville, Texas, 2000, 2004. Um, I preached in the absence of the pastor probably 10, 12 times a year. And I was also the worship pastor, head up the Sunday school department, uh, was in charge of special projects for outreach, like uh, we would have custom car shows on the church grounds to attract the town. We would have uh, Christian concerts for the kids, skeet shoots for the men. We were always looking at how to evangelize and how to reach out, how to get a hold of the people in our town and get them out there. So that was a really nice time. I also was in charge of the radio program. We had a 30 minute radio program every Sunday. I produced it and hosted it. I would play Christian songs. And, and give inspiration, you know, between the songs. So in Fredericksburg, 2011, my wife and I became worship pastors there. We wrote uh, original worship for the church. The pastor came to me one day and asked me to uh, create the home group ministry. So I researched it, read up on it. We started it. We started with three home groups and it's flourishing from there. So I guess I was a home group pastor. I don't know. Anyway, I'm not going to try to give you everything in my life. I just wanted to give it time to kind of see my personality, see my sense of humor, uh, what my vision is, my focus. Um, my teaching style is really exposition, expository. Uh, I love taking the book of Titus and going verse by verse and using historical facts and painting the picture with vivid colors 
for people to see what's going on. And here's why he said this, and this relates back to the Old Testament. This was a prophecy that was fulfilled. And this is, you know, who, here's who was in charge, uh, who here's a high priest at the time. And I just really love doing that, laying it out in an entertaining, passionate way, always encouraging people, don't believe me, be a Berean, study this for yourself this week, see if I'm wrong. I could be wrong. Who knows? I want every believer to be in love with Scripture and the Bible. Uh, my presentations are anything but boring. As a performer, I understand that pastors have to be entertaining or people will fall asleep. That's <laughs> just being honest. You got to keep them engaged. You got to throw, you got to hit them in the head with a rock every once in a while to wake them up. I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, when I was in high school, um, I sat under some really neat pastors and youth pastors, which also led me to become a youth pastor uh, as a senior in high school of my own church department. So I've always been involved in ministry as a bivocation. Um, as far as the homiletics and the hermeneutics go, that's not an issue. I've studied enough. I got that down. Now, as far as the, um, oh, I don't know, the administrative side, I have a vast amount of, of uh, experience and education in the corporate world. I was a construction manager for one of the biggest home builders in America. So I was constantly in touch with the homeowners, shareholders, uh, sales, marketing, um, IT, the architecture department, the vendors, the suppliers, the subcontractors, to try to bring it all together for one purpose. So my strength is in recognizing leadership in other people and allowing them to go do what they do. And then come back and we put it all together and we see the result. I've developed those skills to manage people, processes, and product that cross over and overlay into church administration and the church structure. Now, I attended uh, Christ for the Nations in 1980, and I've uh, mentioned I've served as um, associate pastor and, and here in town, in the absence of the pastor, I would always fill in for him there. But it's not until this year that I felt a release to pursue this. And I want a dynamic body that loves vision, that's ready to go, that works on it already. I don't want to roll into a position to where they're thinking I'm supposed to go out and drag lost people in. That's not what the church is all about. The church is about the people going out, compelling to bring in. And the staff, the pastors are there to equip and inspire and, and educate and support what they're doing. That's where my heart is. Now, I don't have a wall full of degrees. I don't have the master of divinity. Is that a negative or a positive? I don't know. A degree can't give you passion. A degree doesn't make you a leader. A degree doesn't give you vision. For me, I have a lot of uh, friends that are pastors. I just always had friends that are pastors. And like me, they're in their <laughs> 50s. A lot of these guys are burnt out. They're tired. They're hurt. They've been stabbed in the back. They've gone through church splits. Man, they've lost their vision. They've lost, they just, they're, they're just hanging in there for a paycheck. And it's sad. That's not me. See, I'm like the backup running back. That when the running back gets hurt and he's done, I can go, hey, I'm ready, coach. My legs are good. Let's go. Give me the ball. Woo, let me go. I've got passion. I've got enthusiasm. I got vision. And I got a plan. Now, I'm excited to see what the future holds. 
I'm excited to see where God takes Maria and myself. I don't know. We just know we, we have a passion to pastor people and to teach people and to equip and to inspire and enable them to reach out and make a difference in their community, their apartment complex, their work, their college, their high school, and to participate in growing the kingdom. Now, we love millennials. All four of our kids are millennials. We're not like most uh, Gen Xers and baby boomers where we despise, Gen, uh, we despise the millennial. Uh, in our opinion, it's the parents' fault. They created them. These kids are only reacting to what they've been fed their whole life, which is, here's your trophy. You're just as good as anybody else. And real life hit them in the head and said, no, you're not. They don't know what to do. As parents, we didn't equip them to handle disappointment and defeat. I love millennials. There's a place for them in church. It's not irrelevant. It is still influential. And I have a vision and a plan to bring millennials back and show them how they fit into the kingdom and give them purpose. If you're looking for this kind of leader and this kind of pastor, then let's talk.